Datoshri once said that when you go to a waterfall to get water, how much you take back depends on how prepared you go. You know, if you take a teaspoon, you bring back a teaspoon of water. If you take a cup, then you bring a cup of water. And if you take a bucket, then you bring back a bucket of water. Now, some of you are here for some tips and tricks and techniques and strategies. And I call those people pill seekers. Nothing wrong with that. Those are people who would say, you know, I just need to know how to motivate my downlines and everything else is okay for me. Or I just need to know how to convince this negative prospects. I don't need anything else. You know, just tell me how to do that and uh, I'll be good. And if I tell them that, you know, see the demotivated team members or uh, negative prospects are not your real problem. It is something within you. They will reply saying, no, I don't have any problem. I have just lazy team members. That's my only problem. You just show me how to make my team work and I will max out. So you have already diagnosed your problem, uh, prescribed your own medicine, and now just looking for us to supply you the pill. <laughs> and then there is this another group of people who are success seekers, not pill seekers. And they are not looking for a particular pill. They understand that to achieve success that they want, they, they need many things inside them to change fundamentally. Now, how many of you are really serious about achieving success in your business? To all those who are serious, I have something very important to tell you. Now, I don't know how to tell you this without coming across as being offensive or rude, but I am not trying to offend you or insult you, okay? Most of you are married, so you've got your spouses to do that anyway. So I'm just going to tell you this, all right? Stop acting like kids and grow the heck up. Grow up. Be an adult. Now, some of you are thinking, what nonsense is this? I am an adult. I am a man. I am a woman. All right, fair enough. Then act like one. Okay, don't act like uh, a two-year-old or a four-year-old. Don't act like a kid throwing a tantrum. Uh, you don't throw a tantrum? So what is it that you do when something doesn't work the way you want it? You know, maybe when a prospect rejects or maybe some, someone in your team quit or some prospect promised you that they will sign up the next day, but then uh, they're not answering the phone when you call or um, when there is negative media that is spoiling your business. What do you do? You get upset, demotivated, disappointed, angry, and throw a tantrum. You don't want to go for trainings. You don't want to talk to your mentors. You avoid them. When people don't do what you expect them to do, or when you don't get the results that you expected, you get frustrated, angry, disappointed, discouraged, and you feel like a victim, and you get upset, and you throw a tantrum. Why? See, we have never really been successful before. So we have no idea how to behave when something doesn't happen according to how we expect. So we react the way we know, which is getting angry, frustrated, upset, and throwing a tantrum. Behaviors that we learned when we were three or four years old People are 40 years old and still act like a four-year-old when they don't get what they want. Now, I'm not saying don't do this, okay? That's your choice. All that I'm saying is it will not work. There is no parent running to you with a chocolate because you threw a tantrum. And God is not sitting up there looking for who is the most demotivated, who is throwing the most tantrum so that I can give him the success or max out. 
all that drama worked when you were living with your parents. It won't work even with your spouse and definitely won't work in business. So become an adult. Don't behave like you don't understand this world like you were born into it yesterday. Okay, don't pretend like there are no troubles or difficulties in life in general. So let go of all this drama and bullshit if you're really serious about your success. Now, if you want to pretend to try to become successful, then yeah, please, please continue the drama by all means. You know, oh, I worked so hard to build this team and now the stupid media is destroying my team. Where is my upline? Why is my upline not doing anything? Why is this company not doing anything? Why is the company allowing it? What should the company do? I don't care what the company does. I want them to stop this. This is killing my business. You should sue the TV channel. You should put case against everyone. I don't know what the company does. You should do. This is killing my business. So now let me tell you something about negativity, especially media negativity, okay? And I'm going to talk to you like a kid because you behave like a kid when you see negativity in the media. You are behaving like as though you don't understand the world. So please allow me to explain it to you like I would explain it to a five-year-old, all right? Okay, um, beta, news media is a business. Their priority is to make money. They are not for social service or helping anyone. Okay, understand so far? Next, understand this. Their currency is attention. The higher quality attention they can get, the more money they can make. So what is the best tool to do that? It's the same tool that politicians, corrupt religious leaders all have been using for centuries. This tool is as old as civilization itself, extremely powerful. It's called fear and hate. And there is absolutely nothing out there that is more powerful than fear and hate to get somebody's attention. So when you are in a business where attention is money, you will use the best tool that gets the most attention. Okay, beta? So if you thought that the news media had some noble goal to uplift your quality of life by keeping you informed about what is going on around in the world, please wake up and come out of your cave. A lot of things have happened in civilization. You should actually do some research on fear tactics used by news media. You know, maybe just Google fear as a tool by news media or fear tactics of news media or sensationalizing by media, you will be blown away with what they do. Now, they're not bad people and they don't have any intention of harming you. They might also not have any intention of harming our company. In fact, the sad truth is they really don't care if they harm anyone or not. You know, actually one of, uh, one of the sayings in the media, uh, media world is if it bleeds, it leads. If it bleeds, it leads. So does the story make enough people bleed? If not, tweak it so that it makes people bleed. If it doesn't, then throw the story away or hide it in some uh, corner somewhere. Let me give you an example of how we can tweak and sensationalize, all right? I just say, if I am going around and giving people advice that drink one liter of water every day when you wake up and it is good for your health. 
Shall I give you an example of how the media can sensationalize this into a fear-inducing headline that will get your attention? Developing story. Arun George recommends drinking every day one liter of this fluid that is used in the radiators of vehicles. You may be a victim to this already. Now tell me which story will you read? The one with the headline saying drink one liter of water or the second one? Fear is a very powerful tool and news media are experts in using this to manipulate. Have you seen uh, reporters interview victims, you know, either victims of a natural disaster or uh, maybe, you know, like a robbery attack, whatever. They ask questions like, uh, can you please tell us how you feel? And if the victim gives two or three line answer without much of an emotion, then the reporter is not happy. Uh, he wants more bleeding, so he will press on. Are you upset that you lost all your life savings because of the flood? Can you please explain to our viewers how helpless you feel right now? And then they make the victim bleed all over the camera for their benefit. Tears. Then comes the hate trick. How angry do you feel towards the government or the local administration or whoever they want to stir the hatred against, how angry do you feel against them that they did not prevent this from happening? It's just unbelievable. And um, you see this every day. So why do you pretend that this doesn't happen? Only now you're actually on the receiving end of it. When it was happening to others, it was fun to watch, right? See, now, ever since I understood this, and um, I, I understood this from my mentors about 20 years back, almost the same time as I started the business, right? I stopped watching news. If at all, I want some news, I usually don't watch, I read. And that too, very rare. And even when I read, I play this game of, identifying how many fear and hate inducing sentences they use, just so that I don't get carried away in the emotion. But I have found that fear is such a powerful force that we cannot expose ourselves to it without that consuming us eventually. So no matter how strong your mind is, it is a poison. The best option is to keep that away. Now, you might be thinking, my news channel is not like that. They report all facts. Let me ask you this. Do they make money by getting more people to watch the program? Having high rating and selling ad space? If so, uh, please don't fool yourself. They are using fear and hate tactics. Okay, and now in this spectrum of uh, fear and hate, some news media goes all the way to the extreme by actually inventing sensational stories. Whereas the other ones, the more ethical ones, they, on the other extreme, they still tweak and twist to produce sensationalism. Now, when you are in a business that is growing and becoming popular, you are fair game for the news media. It's nothing personal for them. It is just business for them. So when you start getting bigger as a company or even as an individual, you know, like uh, an actor, athlete, public figure, business person, it doesn't matter. If more people have heard about you or your company, you are fair game. You will be used, you will be exploited, period. Grow up, understand this, become an adult. Now with social media, anyone with a smartphone can do the same for free and earn advertising dollars. You know, make a sensationalizing video or post and, and post it on social media. The more mean, offensive, insulting, violent, and attacking the content is, the more fear and hate it will create and the more attention it gets. And this is not something new. Only the media is new. The tactic is, is as old as civilization itself. And uh, 
And as all forms of media is using this tactic for them to stand out among their competitors, they have to step up the game. They have to use more insulting words and pictures and create even more fear and hate. If you ever want to achieve any major success in life, you cannot fall victim for, to fear or hate, especially when people are using it to manipulate you. Now, awareness that this is happening is the best protection okay, against these manipulations. And the next best protection is avoidance. Now, some of you are thinking, Oh, okay, thanks for letting me know all this. I understand. But how will I explain this to my prospects? Okay, I won't get influenced. But my prospects, they are still influenced by this fear and hate tactics of mass media. And that is affecting my business. So give me some tricks, some strategy. Give me a pill to solve that problem. Huh. You know, if that is the, the, is the very first thought that came into your mind when I was telling you all this, unfortunately, you have missed the point by a thousand miles. Do me a favor. You know, please go back to searching for pills and tricks and tips. And maybe when you eventually realize that there are no tricks and pills and they're all temporary, maybe then you will start searching for the real success. Now, for those of you who realize that the biggest challenge you will face is the attack on your mind by others for their personal gain, let me tell you what I do. First and foremost is to make sure that you are not falling for these tricks. When negativity props up, if you feel that you're getting angry and frustrated and discouraged, demotivated, upset, then you are falling for it. So make sure you don't. You realize, you recognize these uh, tactics. Okay, next. Make sure your team understands this from day one. Protecting the mind of your team members is the number one priority. And this is an extremely important understanding, okay? Now, how you carry this out, that is not important. As long as you keep trying various methods to achieve this outcome with your whole team. Different leaders have different approaches. You know, once I was uh, talking to AVP Saeed Amir from Tajikistan, who was on the show just now, right? Telling me how he does it with his team. And they have these regular sessions where they go over uh, these uh, negative fear-mongering techniques of news media. They spread out newspapers. They look out for this. They talk about it and all that stuff, right? Um, and sometime back, the leaders from Sri Lanka used to do something similar where they would take every team member through a journey of all the negative media that was ever published in their country against uh, the business and industry and a company um, over, over like 10, 15 years. And they would show how baseless these acquisitions were. Even like 10 years back, they were telling the company was a, a scam and will be shut down and stuff. And, and here the company is still there. So they would reveal these scare tactics used by media and educate uh, their people. So the method used is not so important. You can keep improving and changing your methods and techniques. What's important is that you understand an issue like this. And like an adult, find a practical solution for it. But many of you don't have time because you, know, you are busy playing a victim, throwing a tantrum, acting out your drama, right? So with a clear mind, think like an adult. All right, stop playing a victim. Stop blaming yourself. Stop blaming others, appliance, company. Stop all this drama. There's no point. Think of solutions. And the solutions will keep changing. Some methods will work better. Some methods will not work. So what? Keep improvising. SW works not only for people, but also it works for methods and strategies. Methods need to keep improving also. 
Why? Because circumstances never remain same. The world around us keep changing. So the methods also should keep adapting and improving. Now, negativity may be a challenge. And negativity may increase the difficulty level, especially when you don't adjust and adapt. I understand that. But that is not the real problem. You know what the problem is? The real problem is that you have a problem with challenges. That is a problem. The problem is that you have a problem with challenges. And that means you thought that success in business was going to be easy. Or it's just talking to a few people and then people will sign up and then automatically the business will start growing and I will be rolling in money. That kind of an expectation is the problem. The expectation that this is going to be an easy, smooth ride and challenges shouldn't be there. Or only those challenges that you are comfortable with should happen, right? Like you get to pick and choose the challenges. The challenges you don't like shouldn't occur. That is the problem. And that's not how it works, at least not in this universe. So next time when you get your own universe, you can design it the way you want. But let me ask you this. Take any circumstance that you think is responsible for your lack of success, all right? And under the same circumstance, there will be some people who have succeeded where you have failed. So how about that? Now, the wrong lesson to take away from this example, what I just gave would be, oh, I don't care how they succeeded. Maybe they were lucky. Maybe they did something wrong. Why should I care about them? I was doing good before, you know, if it was not for this issue, I would still be doing well. Well, circumstances have changed. And circumstances change every few months in a small way and in a big way every few years. And people who don't understand that, under, people who don't understand the circumstances changes, never max out from the same market for more than one or two years. The right lesson to learn when somebody else succeeds under the same circumstance, it is, the lesson is that it is possible to overcome this challenge. If someone else has done it, it is possible. When I don't understand this, I will forever be a puppet in the hands of my circumstances, a helpless victim. Circumstances are just events. They keep changing. It's not positive or negative. And blaming a change in circumstances is foolishness. See, in this whole equation of success, from how I see it, there are only three parts. One is you. The second is your activities, what you do. And the third part is the people who, are, who you are doing it with, your team. Now, most people put their whole focus on this activity part, okay, like learning skills, acquiring knowledge, etc. It is important. But the crucial part of all these three parts is the first one. The individual who is building the business. Skills and team are important, but not as important as the individual. Now, let me clarify what I mean. All right. Now, imagine a leader like Sachin, Mohanna, or Padma, or Kavita, or Sherian, Dave. Let us say, you know, they are giving out their whole list of tips and tricks, methods, strategies, the whole thing, the whole information, knowledge, they're giving it out, um, let us say, printed on paper, right? Giving it out to 10,000 people, 100,000 people. So all of them are getting the exact same knowledge from the same leader. Would all of them achieve the same level of success? Never. Why? Now, you might say that, oh, but, you know, it's uh, some people don't get results because they don't apply their knowledge. Now, that is a very superficial observation. Yes, 
many of them wouldn't even apply that knowledge they you know they received and all that but among the ones that apply among the ones that don't quit and continue still the results are not the same they differ they don't get the same result and then the best part is there might be one or two people who actually achieve a higher success than the leader who who gave them the information so clearly the difference is not in the knowledge that was given it was given equally so what is the difference you know the real difference is that these one or two individuals they threw themselves into the business it was more it was no more a business for them it was more like the business had become a part of them you know they it was not like they were doing an outside activity that is separate from them you know they were not working on something separate it was like whatever they were doing it became a part of them they jumped head first into it and stayed there till they got what they wanted they did not follow a timetable they did not lead they uh, uh, require the leader to remind them of anything they were not working on a schedule like oh 2 oh, hours done already today i had agreed for 2 hours a day for business so okay rest i will do tomorrow no they became their work now if you are thinking like oh, but i am not full time you know I, i have a job i have a family i cannot do that see if again if that is the first thought that came into your head while i was explaining it then you have missed the point by a million miles you should probably just take a bathroom break and not just waste uh, time anymore you know you can you can look for the notes from other people and see if they if you can find a pill uh, hidden somewhere in those notes it's not about working full time or part time it's a whole different mindset and involvement now i cannot teach you how to become like that you know the same way i cannot teach you how to fall in love it is it, i cannot teach you that but i can share with you what i did if you are out there listening to me and what if what i am telling you makes sense to you then listen to this very carefully those of you who are serious about becoming successful in your business you need to understand the power of your environment you know the power of your environment um on you now i'm not talking about circumstance i'm talking about environment okay now, environment is different from circumstance environment is is like an extension of you and it has tremendous effect on you okay environment is made up of uh, people you spend most of your time with the books you read the programs you watch uh, the things that you listen to everything now that is something you create and you are in total control you may be born into a poor family that's your circumstance and that's okay maybe the people in your family is not supporting you that's a circumstance also i am not talking about circumstance i'm talking about your environment your environment is the single biggest contributor to your mindset no amount of hard work and effort can work on conditioning your mindset as much as your environment see it is like a pool that you are immersed in okay when you are in that water most of the time the quality of that water matters a lot if it's just dirty waste water you will get sick even if you take the best food and um, all kinds of multivitamins and all that stuff when you are getting started in your business or even when you are rebuilding from scratch your environment is a thousand times more powerful than anything else that you can do 
what you're surrounded with all the time will seep into your body, will get into you through under your skin, into your blood, into your bones, and to your inner self. See, writing down these three secrets of success or 10 things to max out or 15 things to do that, etc. If, if you were to just follow only those things, you will not achieve success. Now, don't get shocked. Don't misunderstand me. I am not saying those 10 or 15 things don't work. That is not what I'm saying. They work. But the most important thing that you are not understanding is this that those 10 or 15 things were not the only thing that successful people were doing. They were doing hundreds of other things, small and big. And even if they wanted, they wouldn't be able to list all of them out for you. There are so many subtle things that are difficult to explain or list out for these successful uplines of yours. So then what do you do? Do not stop with these lists. Okay, these lists, these tip, uh, tips, tricks, methods, strategies, they're all important. They help, especially when you're getting started. Very helpful, very important. But you have to evolve beyond that. Do not stop with these lists and methods, okay? There are so many other things, small and big, that you need to go through. The, the biggest among them is your personal change. So like, what do you need to change? Almost everything, right? So this immersing yourself into the right environment is the most important thing that you can do for your success. And that's how you will absorb all those hundreds and thousands of small and big things from your successful leaders. See, if you want to only learn some tips and tricks and how to do a, a small activity, like how to do a presentation, um, for example, yes, you can learn that by attending a one or two hour training or a workshop or even learn them online. But if you want to become really good at talking to prospects, you got to immerse yourself in an environment of people who are good at that. It's like this. If you want to just learn the basics of driving a car, sure, you can attend a few classes and learn it. But if your goal is to become a race car driver, a few classes won't help. You got to immerse yourself in that environment. So make sure you surround as much as possible with a team that is pushing you forward. Watch what you see, read, listen to. And also in that team, you cannot be the top person. Okay, you cannot be the top person in that environment of people that surround yourself. If you are the top guy, it won't help you. It may help the other people, but you not so much. You need to have people higher and better than you in that group. If you fill your environment, with garbage and think that it will not affect you, you are being naive. You might say, oh, these people are, you know, I'm around them only when I'm in a party. This is just for fun, just few hours every day. But after that, I'll work hard. This will not affect me. Are you being stupid thinking that way? You know, in, in weight loss and fitness world, there is a saying. The saying is, you cannot out exercise bad diet. There is a reason why tech companies, you know, the tech startups, they want to be in Silicon Valley. There's a reason, or the, or the hedge funds want to be in Wall Street or financial district of London. There's a whole lot of conditioning your environment can do that you can never even come close to by working hard on yourself as an individual. Now, this is a game-changing understanding about success. This is a fundamental shift from how you approach success. Unfortunately, 99% of the people run around looking for tips, tricks, pills. But if you want to get to max out, 
in the next two to four years, you've got to jump in 100%. You can talk to any max out king or queen and they will tell you there's no other way. You want massive success? Sure, you can have it. But be ready to do whatever it takes. Stop approaching it by piece by piece like you have 100 years left to get to max out. Instead, go all in. Jump in completely and immerse yourself in a carefully selected right environment. Live in this environment till you max out. So, well, will you let negativity get to you or your team? Will you allow negativity to get to you or your team? Yes or no? Are you going to throw a tantrum when challenges arise? Or will you handle it like a grown-up adult? Throwing tantrum or growing up? Right. Will you create your success environment? Will you create it? Will you create it today? Will you go all in or will you hold back? Will you go all in? I pray, I sincerely pray that each one of you have the courage to go all in for your dreams. Your dreams deserve that. Your dreams deserve that 100% attention. You know that lovely dream don't sidetrack it. Don't give it like 10% attention as though it's not important. That is the most important thing in your life. Give it 100% attention. And I pray that you, each one of you, get the courage to do that. God bless you. I love you all.